RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television, proudly presents... Screen Directors Playhouse, star Edward G. Robinson, production The Sea Wolf, director Michael Curtiz. The Hollywood Screen Directors present a chronicle of evil, the motion picture drama The Sea Wolf. Starring Edward G. Robinson in his original role of Wolf Larson. January 12th, 1904. Schooner Ghost. Cleared San Francisco Harbor in heavy fog. Picked up two survivors of ferry boat Martinez ran by steamer. Man and woman. Woman more dead than alive. They may both wish they'd been left to drown before this voyage is over. January 14th. Making six knots in variable winds. The pair we skimmed out of the bay are going to be as worthless as most human beings. The woman is still unconscious and... Uh, Louis, our doctor, is still drunk as usual. The man is squeamish, educated, and uh, moral. (laughs) He didn't like the way we treated my first mate of Villa, or the way I held funeral services for him on deck. Men, I only remember part of the burial service, and that's, uh, and the body shall be cast into the sea. Sir Castor, dear. (laughs) Aye, sir. Good riddance to the dirty, rum-swelling sot. Captain Larson, the man is dead. Yes, dead and committed to the impersonal sea. Correct. He didn't just die. He was beaten to death. Oh, that's hard. I confess I struck him lightly a few times. Lightly? Yes, but uh, no amount of stimulation could restore the man from his excess of rum. Now, tell me, what do you do when you're not being shipwrecked? I'm a newspaper reporter. Oh, writer, huh? What do you write? I write what I see. What, is this the first time you've seen a man die? It's the first time I've seen such indifference to death. Well, this voyage is going to teach you something. I expect you to put me and the girl ashore at the first port of call. This is a sealing schooner. A ghost doesn't sail the regular shipping lanes, and we touch no ports. You're on this ship until we return to Frisco in six months. There's such a thing as a law. There is. On this ship, I am the law. What's your name? Humphrey Van Wyden. Hmm. Huh. Elegant. And the girl's name? Ruth Webster. Well, my name is Captain Larson. Captain or sir? I've heard of you. Well, have you now? Wolf Larson, skipper of the Ghost. Refuge of cutthroats and thieves. In whose service, Van Wyden? You are now cabin boy. Cabin boy? Yes, Van Wyden, cabin boy. We carry provisions only for the crew. Well, Van Wyden... Very well. Sir! Very well, sir. You're working for Wolf Larson now. Come in. Cookie said you wanted me. Yes, come in, Van Martin. Look around you. Surprising, isn't it? Books. Hundreds of books. Shakespeare, Tennyson, Poe, Plato. Hadn't expected to find such things in the cabin of Wolf Larson. A brutal, callous, inhuman creature. Master of a brutish crew. Where'd you hear that? A man who tries to acquire dignity by destroying the dignity of others. I read it, Van Wyden. Cookie gave me some notes you're compiling on the voyage. He had no right to steal them. I've also been rereading Milton's Paradise Lost. Have you ever read Paradise Lost, Van Wyden? I've read it. Well, listen to this. I've read it. I said listen. Here, at least, we shall be free. 
here we may reign secure. And in my choice, to reign is worth ambition, though in hell. Better to reign in hell than serve in heaven. Lucifer speaking. Yes, Milton understood the devil, didn't he? Yes. You write rather well yourself. College? College. Hmm. A brutal, callous, inhuman creature, master of a brutish crew. <laughs> yes, I dare say in your set, people aren't a brutal, callous, inhuman lot. No. They didn't have to struggle for bread. You don't have to live in a world where your hand is turned against every man. Even your only brother. If you ever write about this, boys, don't forget to write about the bleak, harsh coast where I was born. And my mother and father, peasants of the sea, who sowed their sons upon the waves and got nothing in return but hunger and misery. Five brothers I had. Four. Four of them drowned like rats in the focuses of leaking rotten ships that should have been condemned. I turned wolf to stay alive, and my hand was against everything posing in God's image, even my own brother. I want all of that written down. Do you hear? I want all of it. Yes? Would you come below deck, Captain Larson? Why, Johnson? The woman, sir. I think she's dying. Dying? Captain. Well, let Louis take care of her. He's a doctor. He, he's drunk, sir. He's always drunk. Come along, Van Wyden. This might give you something else to put in that book you're going to write. <laughs> Morning, Captain. Fine day. You drunken parody of a doctor. How's the girl? Please, don't let them take me back. What's she muttering about, Van Wyden? Oh, I, no. I don't know. I'd rather die. I don't want to go back to prison. Prison? I'd rather die. Did you hear that, Johnson? Yeah. Prison? She's one of us. <laughs> a jailbird! <laughs> Captain Larson. <laughs> well, now, tell us about your charming friend, Van Wyden. I met her on the ferry boat. I knew she was an escaped prisoner. I about convinced her to give herself up and serve the couple of years she had left. And we were rammed. That's why she's got to get off this ship and get back to San Francisco. The sooner she gives herself up, the easier it'll be on her. Yeah, she also happened to have taken a nice fancy to our pretty little jailbird. Hmm? Oh, you filthy... Oh, careful. Yeah. Yeah, careful, Van Wyden. Louis. Louis, Louis. In order that this star pigeon may pay her debt to her fetid society, do something dramatic, will you? Save the girl. I, I, I couldn't operate. My, my hand shakes. Well, that makes it harder and more dramatic, Louis. Operate. <laughs> February 19th, 1904. We're in sealing waters now, and... Uh, I keep a double watch constantly for the Macedonia under six cannon. All of the men don't know what they're watching for. That could be troublesome. My headaches get worse and worse. Ruth Webster has recovered miraculously. She came on deck today when I was watching Van Wyden trying to sharpen the harpoon. She wanted to thank me, she said. You've been very kind, Captain. I wanted to thank you. Kind? Oh, no, you, you've been very lucky. Louis, our doctor, was just drunk enough not to be able to practice all of his ignorance. Saved your life. Louis did a good job, Captain Larson. Now, when can I get back to San Francisco? It's not important. For, not for six months or so, Miss Webster. Six months? Or seven. But I must get back. The sooner the better. I explained it to you, Captain. This is a sealing schooner. There's nothing I can do. However, we want you to feel perfectly at home here. Oh, uh, Johnson. Aye, sir. We want Miss Webster to feel right at home. Take uh, two men and put some bars on her window. <laughs> ben Whiten, you told them. No, Ruth, you talked about it in your delirium. Captain I... Lawson, on second thought, there's no point in my going back to San Francisco. Ruth, you've got to go back. Don't you realize what it means to you? Excuse me, gentlemen. Ruth. Oh, Ruth. Spirit, eh? <laughs> Captain Larson. I talked my heart out to get that girl to give herself up, to save herself. And you've destroyed it all. What, what makes you keep on feeding that bitter ego of yours on helpless people who've never had anything but degradation? I had it. I fought back. You fought back. 
No. You ran away. You hid. You couldn't face the world, so you created a world of your own. A hell on water, a ship where you alone could be master. Van Wyden. You fear nothing on the ocean because you fear everything on land. Van Wyden, you saw my first mate die when I struck him. Yes. Yes, what? Yes, I saw him die. Yes, what? Captain Larson. Uh, what's the matter now, Louis? Uh, Captain, as you may know, I've done a remarkable job in saving Miss Webster's life. Proud of it. It's made a different man of me. I haven't had a drink in a week. All right, you can have a quart of whiskey out of my personal locker, Louis. No, I don't want that. But with the little time left to me, I... I'd like the men to treat me with respect now. Oh. Like I used to be mm -hmm. on land. A fine doctor. I see. Respected. I'd like you to tell the men not to laugh at me anymore. Yeah. Yes, I see, Billy. Van Wyden, you once said I had no feeling for a man's dignity. And I'm going to show you something. Bozen! Aye, sir. Fight the man aft here. Men, <clears throat> now listen to this. From now on, Louis here is not to be laughed at. <laughs> now shut up, Cookie. Shut up. Dr. Prescott here is to be given all the courtesy and respect due him as a doctor. Now, is that clear? Yeah, I know. Thank you, Captain. Thank you. Well, you're welcome, Doctor. I'm glad to do it. I'll go down and put on my old frock coat. Ah, uh, yes, by all means. And be careful of that top step, Doctor. Oh. <laughs> You, you devil! You kicked me! You kicked me down those steps! Ah, you slipped, Doctor. You fell. I don't have to stand for this anymore. Larson, you must be insane. I won't stand for this another day. <laughs> He's climbing into the rigging. Well, let him. He's an old man. He may fall. Well, let him. You let him. You regret that you ever made a fool of me, Wolf Larson. You men! You know why there's a double watch all the time now? I know! I've sailed with the ghost long enough to know. Tell him, Wolf Larson. Tell him about your brother, Death Larson. Now shut up, Louis. Come down. Tell him about Death Larson and the Macedonia and the cannon he has on board to blow you and your filthy top to kingdom come when he finds you. Tell him. Come down here. If you men had one ounce of human spirit left in you, you'd mutiny. Come out of that rigging, Louis, before I shoot you down. I'm coming. But there's no price... No price, no man will pay for living. I'm coming down, all right. Louis, don't. Coming down! Good Lord. Yeah. Give me a hand, Van Wyden. A man jumps to his death because of you and all you can say is... Van Wyden. Give me a hand. Why? What's wrong with you? My, my head, I have a terrible headache. You take me to my cabin. are listening to the Screen Directors Playhouse production of The Sea Wolf, starring Edward G. Robinson and presented by RCA Victor. Just a month ago today, RCA Victor sprang a big, beautiful surprise on the American people. A breathtaking lineup of 14 brand new RCA Victor television models, all at the lowest prices in RCA Victor history. Somewhere among these 14 new masterpieces, you'll find the television set you've been yearning for the one which exactly suits your family, your furniture, your finances. Let's say you have an average size home and about $280 to spend. You'll probably choose the new console model with a 12 and a half inch screen. It's traditionally styled in your choice of rich woods. And of course, like all RCA Victor television sets, it gives you those maximum values in pictures, sound, and dependability, which only the world leader in electronics can achieve. 
To find the television set which exactly fits both your earning and your yearning capacities, join the parade to your RCA Victor dealers. Now, back to the Screen Director's Playhouse production of The Sea Wolf, starring Edward G. Robinson in his original role of Wolf Larson. That last attack was the worst. The headaches are getting worse, more frequent. There's something brewing among the men. They're sullen and silent. That's bad. They'll bear watching. And one. Larson. What's happened? Mutiny. Some yellow dog just slugged me and threw me overboard. But I pulled myself up by a tow line. Those swine, the mutinous swine. I'll get them. Call out your hand, Van Wyden. Why? Whoever the men were who attacked me, their pulses will still be racing. I want to feel your pulse. Hold out your hand. All right. Here. <clears throat> you fool. Trying to fight me. <clears throat> In the belly. And the hand. <clears throat> you fool. <clears throat> now get out. And was play. Not the work. Now. Oh. Oh, my head. Help me. Help me. Huh? Why? Uh, I'm blind. Blind? My head. There's something in my brain growing, getting worse. I'm blind. They'll go away again. Now stay with me. Don't tell the man, will you? Pity, Van Wyden. Pity. No, I... Won't let a blind man be slaughtered. Where are you? Your hands. Give me your hands. Here, Larson. Uh. <laughs> Larson, you're breaking my hands. Yeah, pity, Van Wyden. Pity. <laughs> you had your chance, you fool, and you lost. I go. Now, you'll have to stay with me until my sight comes back. Cannon. The Macedonia. My brother, he's sworn to sink me and over a woman. The fool, the fool. You won't let them murder a blind man. You wouldn't let my brother sink a blind man, would you? Hmm? No. Well, take me up on deck. There's a fog. Tell me what it is, and I'll order the crew to take the ghost into the fog. Hurry, we're hit! <laughs> happening on deck? We're under attack. We have to abandon ship, you and I. No! It's our only chance, Ruth. I won't go back to prison now. You've got to. It's your only chance. I've had number three lifeboat ready for this for a week. Now hurry. March 8, 1904. Pain. Beating, tearing pain in my head. And fog. Fog on the sea and fog in my eyes. My crew is deserted. I'm sinking. The ghost is cut to pieces. My brother has his revenge for the woman I took from him who is too weak, weak to live sternly. The ghost is down by the head. Water in my cabin. I am alone. If I have a revolver beside me, I will not die drowning. Who's there? Who is it, I say? I see you. I can shoot. Who are you? Van White. Oh, you're back. You came back. Two days on the water in an open boat. Thirsty. We opened a breaker of water, Larson. <laughs> Very palatable, huh? Salt water. 
You knew all the time I was planning to escape. Yeah, all the time. I can stand it. Ruth can't. I came back. You're sinking. I need supplies. No. No, you're not going to leave this ship again. I've lived alone, but I won't die alone. Are you afraid? Yeah. I'm a man. You're a wolf. Wolves die meanly. No. No, not Wolf Larson. Not meanly and not alone. But in the company of kindred spirits and congenial minds, Van White. You. I'm very sorry for you, Wolf Larson. Pity again, huh? <laughs> well, I suppose good Christian people take a lot of comfort in their fetishes, like pity, love, humanity, even to the last. Water's rising in here. We'll drown if we stay here. You mutinate. Mutineers don't share in the last honors of the sea. They hang. They get shot down. Well? Can't you say something, Van Wyden? Something magnificent and spiritual before you die? I've said it. But not to you, Larson. Captain Larson, you swine. Captain! Sir! All right. If it makes you any happier. Sir. Thank you. Now shoot. I... I... I can't die alone. You understand? Shoot. I... Shoot! He was not only mad, he was blind. Totally blind. He missed widely. I slipped quietly toward the open door. He was standing waist high in water, erect. Blind eyes fixed on his dark eternity. The hard lines gone from his mouth that was shaping words long forgotten in the brain of Wolf Larsen. Deep calleth unto deep the voice of thy cataracts. All thy waves and thy billows are gone over me. I left him there. But in the end, at the very last, Wolf Larsen had his only wish, the only quarter he'd ever asked from man or God. He was not alone. I've just heard the last act of The Sea Wolf. Our star, Edward G. Robinson, and our guest screen director, Michael Curtiz, will be with us in just a moment. Next Friday, one of the screen's most delightful comedians visits the screen director's playhouse. Our story, for the first time on the air, is This Thing Called Love, and recreating her original role will be Rosalind Russell with screen director Alexander Hall. Now, here again is tonight's star, Edward G. Robinson. Eddie, I can hardly wait to tell our listeners what you like in real life. Well, go ahead and tell them. Well, here is a man who is not only a sensitive lover of great music, but also a world-famous art collector who shares his treasures with all comers. In short, friends, beneath the ferocious sea wolf dwells but the harmless art hound. You know, what are you trying to do, Jimmy? Ruin my reputation? Get me drummed out of the mob? <laughs> no, Eddie. I'm just trying to make sure everybody knows about your deep interest in art before I ask you a $64 question. What do you think of the appearance, the design, of RCA Victor's new 45 RPM system? Why, Jimmy, I'd say it's a great triumph of functional design. That is, if I'm not talking too fancy. <laughs> that is, the size and the shape of the 45 record changer and records are entirely determined by their function, and that is to make better music. Isn't that right? Absolutely. The RCA Victor engineers found that music was at its finest when recorded and played at 45 revolutions per minute instead of the standard 78. And that's what determined sizes, much smaller than in the old systems. Say, Eddie, how do you like those tiny 7-inch records? Well, they're marvelous space savers, Jimmy. I have a couple of hundred, and they fit on uh, about a foot and a half of ordinary bookshelf. 
I like their rainbow colors, too. Say, uh, what's the uh, uh, engineering reason for the uh, big donut holes in the middle of the records? Well, the engineers found they could get the fastest, easiest, automatic record changing ever if they put all the mechanism inside the big, fat center spindle with no gadgets to adjust. So the records were made to slip easily over the spindle, ten at a time, for up to 50 minutes of music. Well, I'd say the 45 is a triumph any way you look at it. Well, that's what everybody's saying, Eddie. Saying with purchases of over 50,000 of the record changers and over 2 million records a month. The 45 is sweeping the country. See and hear it at your RCA Victor dealers soon. Prices start as low as $12.95 for the players and 65 cents for the records. <laughs> About 25 years ago, ladies and gentlemen, both the English language and motion pictures underwent a drastic change. It began when a young Hungarian director arrived in Hollywood. The English language has never quite recovered from the things he's done to it. As for pictures, his splendid talent has created more than 90 of them, including such memorable screen experiences as Casablanca and Yankee Doodle Dandy. Now I'd like you to meet him, my director in The Sea Wolf, Michael Curtiz. Thank you, Eddie. But those was very unkind things you said about my English. Really? I admit that people before thought my speech was abominable. <laughs> you mean awful? I meant abominable. Oh, well, we'll let it go out there. But they are improved. They? Oh, what do you mean, they? They are used to me. Oh. <laughs> well, Mike, you know, those were uh, very unkind things you did to me in the Sea Wolf, making me as nasty as you did. Well, Eddie, it was very difficult to directing you in a role like that. You were really so charming, so likable, and we just had to make a beast out of you. Well, I don't know. I'm a pretty tough guy, you know. Uh, from now on, I'm putting directors on a shooting schedule, and I don't mean cameras. Understand? <laughs> Show it to you how to be a beast. Well, you did, Mike. Who turned you into the terror of the sea? You did, Mike. And who is going to give you a good spanking if you don't behave yourself? Oh, but Mike. Quiet. All right, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you see, folks, there is nothing to being a director. All you have to do is talk quietly to people. <laughs> Coming, Edward? <laughs> yes, Mike. Good night, everyone. <laughs> good, good night. night. <laughs> and good night to you, Edward G. Robinson and Michael Curtiz. Remember next Friday, Rosalind Russell in This Thing Called Love with screen director Alexander Hall, brought to you by RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, first in television. <laughs> The Sea Wolf was presented through the courtesy of Warner Brothers, producers of the Technicolor adventure drama Montana, starring Errol Flynn and Alexis Smith. Edward G. Robinson will soon be seen in the London Films production, My Daughter Joy. Michael Curtiz's latest production for Warner Brothers is Young Man with a Horn, starring Kirk Douglas, Lauren Bacall, and Doris Day. In tonight's presentation, Paul Fries played Humphrey Van Wyden. Others in the cast were Lorene Tuttle, Lou Merrill, Wilms Herbert, Herb Litton, Herbert Butterfield, and Frank Barton. The Sea Wolf, from the novel by Jack London, was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger. That original music was composed and conducted by William Lava. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley, with dramatic direction by Bill Carn. Portions of the program were transcribed. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking, and inviting you to listen again next Friday, when RCA Victor presents... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Rosalind Russell, production This Thing Called Love, director Alexander Hall... Next, it's Jimmy Durante with Don Amici on NBC.